Hello and welcome again uh, back to Sim Racing Online. We're starting a little bit late today, uh, so yeah, uh, a little bit late due to some uh, RL issues. But yeah, uh, I'm just gonna we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and uh, present you the series that's happening right now in Sim Racing Online, the GT1 series in Silverstone, just like you can see right now. Uh, beautiful track, beautiful cars, obviously, and they're. We're qualifying right now we got about 10 minutes 15 minutes i presume to finish the qualifying about 17 cars today 26 sign up and a lot of action to go so yeah stay tuned and uh, we'll be right back with you Welcome along. Uh, yeah, and uh, welcome back once again. Uh, you might notice a little bit of a change in the overlay, and yes, you are right. It's not the same as before. We're trying to change it up a little bit, and it's gonna improve over the races as we're still experimenting with it. But without further ado, we're gonna present to you the new series presented by Sim Racing Online, a GT1 series uh, with multiple beautiful tracks, including Silverstone, Spa, and many more. About five tracks. This is the first series, about 62 minutes. Of racing in a track of a 5.891 kilometers and it's today I'm joined by Ricardo Lorenzo which they will join me very very soon now I know that we are in qualifying and yes as much as you're excited or at least as far as I can tell we will switch right there to it Hey everyone, hi, I'm Ricardo. You probably saw me breaking some cars around the other trucks. <laughs> Today I am on the other side, so hi everyone, nice to meet you. Hope you enjoy my commentary. Yes, uh, welcome along Ricardo. Today a lot of drivers, uh, different cars and uh, many yeah. different styles of driving I presume. Yeah. 
big one, and what a beautiful category you have today, the GT1. Ford is absolutely a blast from the past, as we can see Usava right now taking it through the packets and maggots corner, as he's still holding up the uh, P1 for now, provisional pole position, and he's yet to be beaten by anyone. Uh, Nick Newcomb, a newcomer as well. Usama has been here for a few races, but new, Nick is new here. But that's not the same for Tony Talviti as they're separated. The P1, P2, P3 are separated by less than a second. It's looking pretty good so far, Ricardo. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Uh, nice qualify. Uh, I saw some time during their pre-practice trainings. Uh, I know Usama can do a uh, low 39, so he probably isn't finding his top pace at the moment. Uh, and it seems that Nick Newcomb is the only one right now who can barely match its pace on the quali. Let's see if they can get better time, a better time and lower it is qualifying up. Uh, let's see, let's see. It's going to be a fun race. We have a lot of talents. Uh, we know John Vidigas, we know Tony Talvitie, uh, Barrett Erickson, very, very, very fast people and it's a long race so qualifying doesn't give you the winning as we all know. Absolutely, as we see now, Nick Newcomb in the uh, Maggots Beckett and Chapel Complex uh, on his writer engineering uh, livery, Murcielago. Now, Usama Nani uh, with a 150.4, we know that is not his fastest effort. Uh, Nick Newcomb barely uh, outside the 151 wall. and But yeah, as uh, Nas and Rick were saying, we have Tony Talvisha, John Vidigas, Johnny Gutierrez, Roberto Valli, one of the fastest drivers on the Assetto Corsa Competizione series here on SRO and Barrett Erickson as well, so plenty of fast people here. Yeah, definitely, definitely uh, a lot of fast, a lot of fast people uh, and I mean, I hope the, the race is going to be good, I think the race is going to be good because they are very close to each other and I'm sure we're going to see uh, a very good show. Dying moments of this uh, qualifying, we have Barry Erickson getting overtaken by Phil Brown in P7. Uh, plenty of people still improving as Tony Talvice snatches P2 from Nick Newcomb with a 150.8. Uh, special, special effort from Tony Talvice who is locking up his tires into turn one. Now the Matic 4, we know how stable this car can be and what a special machine, of course. These cars are GT1 specification, so the last extreme GT series before GT3 pretty much took over, as we now have the checker flag in qualifying. Checker flag in qualifying is out, so Uxampo Samagnani at the moment leading the uh, charts with a 150.4. Yeah, that's it, that's going to be is capable to get the, the right lap, the right lines to close the gap or maybe taking the lead. Uh, but he, he's a fast guy, we know that. Uh, he won a lot of, uh, he won lots of time or races and I'm pretty sure he can, he, he has uh, the potential to get the best time that he can. On the back at some maggots, complex, right now on the straight, the last trade before the last pair of corners. Now, Tony Tavice is putting personal best sectors, so we will get maybe an improvement as he locks up the front right tire, getting into uh, what I believe is a stall corner. Now, coming up to the uh, chicane before the straightaway, let's see how tidy it is. Absolutely precise. Also, easy on the throttle as the car gets slightly out of, uh, out of the way. Now, one. 49 is the top effort. We have 150.7. Oh. Is he improves his time, uh, so it's still gonna be a second position for Tony Talvice. Uh, so for now, Usama Nani is your one guy. Position yeah. for Usama Nani with a 154. Three Tony Talvice follows up closely in P2 yeah. uh, with a 150.7. Um, Nick Newcomb, the rookie in P3 right now with a 
as Uzan McNani improves on his lap time, still over the 150 mark. So I'm pretty surprised uh, these top five drivers do, did not go under the 150. Yeah, it's a bit surprising. They they've been doing good. Uh, from what I saw the the on the on the live timing, the best lap that was marked was by Osamaknani in a one forty nine. Probably it was a one off. It was a perfect lap. Uh, but these cars are really really fast because uh, you, if you compare it to the GT threes that we we drive we drive uh, we we have been driven driving on uh, the circuit uh, they a fast lap on the gt3 is, is 159 and now a fast lap on these cars is a 150 so it's these cars are really really fast really really difficult to drive they doesn't have ibs uh, this car doesn't have P, uh, traction control so it's very much of the driver's ability and not more of the easy car, easy of the car management Absolutely, and as we now go into the warm-up session, uh, five minutes warm-up session, uh, Johnny Gutierrez, Roberto Valli and Phil Brown are the cars first out of the pit lane. Uh, now, we are sure that these cars are faster than the GT3, and the reason we say that is, as uh, Ricardo just said, these cars used to mount bigger and more powerful engines, you should say. For the, the Murcielago, for example, it mounts a V12, engine so that tells you how fast that thing can go and don't don't forget that gt3 cars nowadays are limited to a certain amount of horsepower whereas these cars were pretty much pretty much all of these cars were well over the 650 horsepower, horsepower um, mark so the uh, terrific machine We now go towards the uh, grid. Osama Gnani in pole position in the uh, uh, Lamborghini. Tony Salvici in P2 with the uh, 4GT. Nick Newcomb, the rookie, with the Lamborghini in P4. John Villegas in P4. Johnny uh, Gutierrez, the uh, champion from last uh, from the last series in P5. Roberto Balli, great, uh, great to see him here uh, in P6. Now, Mike Volick in P9 is one of the rookies for this series as well. Didier Coelho, the Ferrari driver for, from the uh, IMSA season in P10. Kirill Kirillov in uh, P11. As we now go towards the uh, last spots on the grid, Paul Yukan, Christian Dos, Michael Labelle, Ed Jones, a guy we very much know uh, from previous races. And last but not least, Stephen Wenham. Uh, all uh, new names here in the GT1 series. Great to see them joining simracingonline.co.uk and if you guys want to be part of the spectacle of course you can join simracingonline.co.uk on the internet they have many many series going on not only on r factor 2 where you can find this amazing gt1 series as well as the alfa romeo 155 uh, so some old school racing um, we also have many series going on on project cars automobilista 2 and many more to come so have, uh, have a look. Well, uh, I would like to take your attention, uh, you, Lorenzo, Ricardo, and our viewers, that this series will contain a mandatory pit stop, so we will be keeping an eye, as we see, uh, I don't know who drivers this ticket site, as we will see other drivers if they're gonna follow these rules or not, because not following or failing to follow these particular rules will cause into a DQ. So then, we will keep an eye on that and I hope you guys keep an eye on that because it'll be interesting to see what people will choose to pit because I'm not sure if the, the full deck can get you for a full race of a 60 minute uh, duration but uh, we will see and uh, yeah, beautiful livery right there Lorenzo, American baby <laughs> yeah, Absolutely, I love Absolutely, a beautiful Corvette by Johnny Gutierrez of course, American driver That's on amazing. American car so it's yeah, great to see Johnny bringing up the level and his heart as well. We know Johnny is a very, very quick guy. He won the driver's title in uh, GT3 category in the last IMSA series. So this is a terrific driver, for sure one to watch. I mean, I'm a fan right now just because of that livery, Lorenzo. It's looking amazing. It's looking fire. Yeah, it's one of the best of the lot I've seen. Uh, great, great to see him show off his American style and uh, what a great way of doing that on a Corvette. Now, let's not forget to mention we have a lot of newcomers today, as Lorenzo already did. Nick, Nick, Newcomb, 
and I believe Roberto Bali. I haven't seen him in all the series, so I believe he's a newcomer as well. Yes, Roberto Bali is one of the top runners in the uh, Seto Corsa universe yeah. uh, here on Sim Racing Online. Uh, I think I believe it's the first appearance uh, he does in R Factor 2 here. That might be true, and I think, I don't know, I haven't seen the name of Christian Dogger as well. I might have, but I am not quite sure. So that could as well be a newcomer, which is really great to see. But I, we got also Stefan Wenham and Mark Hightree. Those are names I'm not familiar with, and I'm very interested and keen to see how will they perform today. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I... For no, I know Bali from the ACC series. Uh, he's a fast guy. Uh, he was leading the. He's still leading the championship in ACC. Uh, so I know he's gonna be a uh, a good add-on to this R Factor Two pack. Um, let's see if he can. Uh, he can be as quick as in ACC. Uh, clearly, are two different simulators and two different, uh, really different driving styles. Uh, especially because, the, as we saw, as we said before, cars are really different, and not only because they are not GT3s, uh, which is the main category on ACT, uh, but even because the the sims are different. Uh, so let's see if we can uh, get used to our factor too quickly. Uh, but I'm sure it's gonna be at a good. It's gonna take a, a good race. Probably not on the top five. I don't know, maybe, you know, don't want to say position for the other ones. So let's see if he can do, if he can get, go up the sixth place. Nah, as we are seeing the beautiful cars lining up on the main straight, ready to race. And that is indeed And I was, I was amazed by the fact that we do not have many uh, Aston Martins on the field. As a matter of fact, Michael Labelle, Paul Yuham, and uh, Stephen Wenham are the only ones on the amazing DBR9. I was expecting the Aston to be uh, the most uh, numerous, uh, 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 you know, car. I think somebody as got we a speak, Yeah, as we and speak, Tony Jalvije got, got, got a penalty for probably jumping the start procedure. That is a massive uh, bummer for Tony as he's starting from P2. That's going to be a critical uh, for everyone else's strategy. I wonder how this will, uh, you know, affect the race. This is what drama already. I mean, uh, I, mean, um, I yeah. didn't expect to see that at the, the beginning of the race, but I believe that if you didn't, you don't hold your brakes while you jump to the grid, your car might shift and start shifting forward, which will cause that. Very unfortunate, but I don't know, it's going to be very tight to do something with this penalty in a 62 minute race, don't you think, uh, Lorenzo? Absolutely, and the thing is, this is only a one-hour race. This is not like the IMSA or the uh, S397 Endurance Series we saw and we broadcasted here on Sim Racing Online. This is a 60-minute race, so time gets more valuable uh, over the course of the race. And that, that's going to cost Tony a major, major, uh, you know, points finish here. Uh, we'll see, we'll see if he can come back. If, of course, Usama and Newcomb will be uh, happy about this, as we know Tony is a great, you know, starter and great pusher. As we now get towards the old uh, pit straight, this used to be on the F1, uh, you know, it used to be the straight where F1 kicked off his races before the track got a massive uh, phase lifting in uh, at the end of 2009. Of course, uh, I was I was personally bummed by what they did to the track, but because I love the uh, old uh, bridge action. Uh, of course, we do not have that now. We have the new pit straight and uh, a few corners before the uh, Hamilton straight, so... Uh, still a great so. track, Silverstone. Uh, iconic track. Absolutely iconic track. And if I can say, Lorenzo, it's really impressive how you don't even see any of the MC12 which in reality was the fastest car between the GT1s, which was really a monster. No one is driving that car, and no one is driving the GTR either. Probably those cars are not really fast on this. I tried some of the cars. Uh, I, I, for what I tried, I know that the GTR is really not uh, the thing. It's really hard to keep on track, uh, but I never feel that the MC12 was low. Probably they 
they are they train better they know better they know what they are taking lots of lambos lots of matic probably these are the most stable cars in the pack uh because these cars are very very over so oh, and Tony, I, Tal I uh, sorry to interrupt you, uh, Rick. Tony Talvice already in the pit lane to uh, probably discount his penalty. So a smart move as the field moves slowly towards the uh, on straightaway. Smart move by Tony Talvice as he will lose not so much time now. Smart move by Tony. That strategy will surely not be hindered as we expected. Now we will be racing as soon as we get on the finish line. Tamanani will lead the pack. Now we are racing in Silverstone and Usamanani surely takes the lead with Nick Newcomb in second place. Immediately under pressure from uh, Johnny Gutierrez in the red Corvette. Uh, John Villegas of sure, uh, for sure lurking behind him. Roberto Valli in P5 holding uh, pretty good. There we see Johnny Gutierrez making progress. Ooh, I mean he made up like three places already. Absolutely, and Ning Nukom got a bad exit from that corner. Johnny will have the, the run up the uh, inside there for uh, the next few corners. On the Hamilton grid we go. Johnny Gutierrez taking the inside, but backs out of it is too far back. Lamborghini proving to be a very fast car on the straight line. Uh, amazing uh, amazing uh, beginning of the race as Tony Talvice rejoined in P14. As he now goes past Christian Dauber. It looks like when the race started, the back has dropped a little bit. Not sure what happened, but we'll take a look at the replay later. Uh, I think Bart Eriksson had a contact because he's now in last place. He was starting from the top of seven, if I remember correctly. So, already drama in the first minutes of the race. Yeah, yeah there we see. Almost three seconds already of the third lap. Wow. First Incredible lap. start. This is not good news for Barry Harrison. I mean, being last place, I know it's uh, this is not a long race for him to have the upper hand to kind of think about what he's going to do. As Usama already built a huge lead, three seconds over Nick Komwo, who's uh, now... Uh, did I spell his name really? Yes, I did. Newcomb. Uh, he's now being chased by his fellow racer, Johnny Gutierrez, and he's that American Corvette, as they about to pass before the last... Last corner before the start finish line. And it's. Uh, and what a race already. Johnny Gutierrez is, looks to be very, very fast. Yeah, and he's definitely and trying to get into the slipstream of the Lamborghini. This is going to be critical for Johnny. He, I, I'm not sure what the strategy will be for him and Osama, but Johnny surely needs to get on with it as Nick Newcomb protects the inside there. Bart Erickson in the pits, so he maybe collected damage uh, from an earlier contact. We missed that, unfortunately. But I, I did see uh, one of the uh, Raider engineering cars in the background going wide. That could have been filled round by any chance. Um, so maybe, I don't know, we, we missed that, unfortunately. But Nick Newcomb still in P2, 4.7 seconds behind Busama, which is on a hell of a pace. Now, one, I, I'm wondering what the strategy is going to be like, because Usama looks to be the fastest car by far. Uh, Nick Newcomb and Johnny Gutierrez battling over P2 and 3. J uh, Johnny Gutierrez playing the opportunistic car and uh, just lurking behind them, looking at what's going on. I, I cannot help Ooh, us to say like what a nice delivery Johnny has. Uh, he dropped a bit there as we see uh, John slips his wheels to the grass Ooh. as they pass about the Beckets and Maggots. Is that the name Lorenzo or my cinema? Yeah, it's Ma Maggots, Beckets and Chapo, the last one. Wow, that's three names actually, so I've been uh, messing up completely as uh, Johnny Gutierrez might get a split stream right here. He takes the Ooh, inside. up the outside, there's no way there. It switches to the inside, but the Lamborghini has too much top speed. Johnny will have to be precise in the technical part of the track to try and tuck in behind the Lamborghini as look at Mark Hytri on the inside with the Matek uh, 4GT as that I think that's Mike Bolik uh, having a battle with Michael LaBelle Ooh, as this is the fight for P16 look at that move Lorenzo that's amazing for a I know it's yeah that's a great move into star look at that Fire from the Corvette, absolutely vicious car. And no, Christian Dagger lost it a little bit, went wide. 
as Michael Lavelle has got in front of... I mean, Tony Telvisha is already up to P9. Yeah, as we and see Michael Lavelle... places as we speak. Look at those brakes, Lorenzo. They're glowing red as... Tony Talviti made use of the issues that was happening to uh, Michael Lavelle ahead of him and uh, took him from the uh, side. Tony Talviti has dropped a lot of places. Yeah, he had, a, he had a penalty at the beginning, but he's now making up places very quick. In the space of two and a half laps, he made up eight places, so great Hard progress crazy. from him. I mean, so much stuff is happening right now. We can't keep up, so we hope you, the viewers, are <laughs> bearing with us a lot of things that happening in a fraction of a second sometimes and we see Osama already up in the uh, S's corner maggots and you know the rest <laughs> as we see <laughs> Gutierrez is now also about to chase it looks like he always struggles with the exit as his car tries to start sliding now I know you're gonna say it's a Corvette it doesn't take turns but I'll tell you what this car is made for this track it is absolutely hammering it's just about that control and these cars are not easy to control ain't that right Lorenzo Absolutely, and Nick Newcomb now protecting from Johnny. Johnny looks to be on the edge with a low aero profile, but John Bidigas making the most of that. Oh, backs out of it. Johnny Gutierrez holds the inside. Uh, now, so you want to crank up your microphone a little bit because you're very low. Anyway, Johnny Gutierrez uh, is following uh, Nick Newcomb, able to uh, hold the pace of the Lamborghini Murcielago, which is uh, critically without the slipstream, as Osama Nani is rocketing away almost 8 seconds clear from everybody else. A good fight between Kirill Kirlov and Mark Heitri also in the background, but we have to focus on Tony Gutierrez battling with these guys at the front. I mean, uh, Osama has already got fans now in the chat of our live stream. If you're watching the VOD, this is different, so this is on Twitch now as uh, a lot of people are cheering for Osama right now, probably teammates. Yeah, so it's definitely looking good for him. But the battle now that we have to focus on, like Renzo mentioned, is Gutierrez, Nick, and John Vidigast, and uh, presumably Roberto Valli, because he's only about 1.4 seconds. Now Roberto Valli is closing, is closing towards this group, and rightfully so, with that 4GT, he will be on the same pace as these guys as they now have to uh, manage their fuel and tires a little bit as we know that the pit uh, you know the pit window opens in about 15 minutes so plenty of action already in less than nine minutes of racing and we're gonna have seven i think seven rounds is that right or, or five or so i don't there's remember exactly rounds, how many there's five right? yeah so great great uh, image for the gt1 series as we get a yellow flag in sector one not sure why. I think Mark Heitri, uh, who was fighting with Kirill Kirlov in for P10, fell back all the way to P15 and is now dropping again. He's now down to P16, unfortunately, and now 17 and dropping again. So something must have happened to Mark as he is, looks to be stationary on the track. Uh, we're we're going we're gonna to check with him what happened. Uh, yeah, there you see. Oh, engine. That's an engine failure. That's oh an engine God, failure Lorenzo. for Mark Heitri, the first casualty. That's not what we want to see. I mean, you Definitely can let the engine no. cool down, maybe start it again. I don't know. Is it, he didn't. Maybe. He didn't escape. Oh, there he. Oh. Maybe he was too aggressive on the on the downshift. I don't know. Could have been. Could have uh, been. We will check for sure. Usually is the most frequent frequent problem when you break an engine probably on the downshift that he it, it was like that or not uh, by the way it seems like uh, the battle between Newcomb Gutierrez and Vidigas has only helped more for Sama right now yeah and Johnny Gutierrez now fell back he got overtook by uh, John Vidigas John Vidigas in front of uh, Johnny Gutierrez now yeah definitely definitely uh, we know how Vidigas is a, a very good good driver on the 1v1 on the overtakes and on the defense let's we know that uh it's showing us a great pace oh john no johnny gutierrez made a mistake he almost lost it out of the uh, chicane and john really guess said thank you very much for that and didn't wait one second to get ahead and rightfully so
John Vidiez now hunting uh, towards uh, Nick Newcomb in for that second place. Ilio Coelho, great to see him here. Tony Talvice now in P7 under pressure from uh, Mike Volik. Mike Volik was, I think, uh, I think he's a rookie as well. So great, uh, great to see him battle with one of the best of the lot, Tony Talvice. I mean, listen to that engine roar as it passes through the track of Silverstone in Great Britain as he's being chased right now by Mike Volick. Mike Volick had the fighting for P8 right now, P8, P7, sorry. Tony Talviti made up a lot of places. He's doing a heroic move today. Getting that penalty for sure wasn't a uh, thing he would want, but then it looks like Tony Talviti didn't want to give up and uh, stayed true. To what he believe in and stay true to his racing all right it, it's a shame it's a shame because he, he was one move of the fastest once again. i don't know if he was uh yeah he actually made a move lorenzo oh my yeah Didier Coelho, that was Didier Coelho making a mistake into the braking area uh, of the uh chicane before the uh pit straightaway now Tori del Vice was the only one uh very very close to usama in terms of uh, qualifying phase as well as nick so, I wonder what the strategy will be for these three. I mean, take a look at that. He took the inside, closed up on him, decided to dive, but yet kept his car on the inside, took all the moves. Tony Talviti is killing it right now. Yeah, great move. I thought Peter had made a mistake, but no, that's Tony Talviti uh, being the strongest under breaking. Uh, he really needs uh, guts to make uh, that, uh, can, that kind of a move uh, into a breaking area with these cars. These cars are unforgiving they're not as simple as the gt3 may be uh, they're raw mechanical old school gt machines and what a beautiful car the 4gt is and look at fiddy gas looking like a star counting its prey and his prey is nick newcomb absolutely and it looks like nick newcomb is now on the back foot as john Villiers looks to be hounding him lap after lap now we see phil brown uh, battling with Michael Labelle, and what a great way of confirming how Michael Labelle is one of the best drivers here. P9 on his first GT1 outing and battling all the way with a 4 GT, which seems to be the car that's working uh, better than the other ones, I would say. Although we have a, a Lamborghini 1 2 at the moment, but uh, the 4 GT looks to be the fast car for sure. I mean, do we have to talk today about Usama? What a great performance, leading the pack eight seconds already when we're, when we're only 46 minutes in the race. What an astonishing performance for Usama. This is a uh, one of those races that happens to every driver, and we're quite quite looking at it right now. It's uh, very intense, very very good, very cool to see and witness. Absolutely, and uh, it's going to be critical to understand uh, what the fuel and tire strategy will be for him as. The pace differential is off the charts, and look at how stable the car looks. It doesn't look like he's uh, pushing at all. So we'll see how the uh, how the race goes on with the pit stop strategy. There we see the P2 and P3 in the background. That's John Villegas is now gonna try for sure. He's in the slipstream of Nick Newcomb. Look at the speed differential. The 4GT looks to be very very fast. Uh, John Vinigas trying to go for the inside, but Nick Newcomb positioned himself in the right spot uh, for the breaking into stall corner as we now go towards the last couple of turns. Uh, Nick Newcomb holding uh, pretty good on John Vinigas, which we know is uh, kind of a Nigel Mansell kind of driving style. He, he hounds you until you crack under pressure, and we truly want to see more of that. Tony Salvisha now all over Roberto Bali for P5 and look at Johnny Gutierrez trying to get away from these guys but not being able to the Corvette doesn't seem like it has all that pace uh, Mike Volley here in the Aston Martin trying to catch Didier Coelho and that's for a P7 Ooh, of course uh, if you're so this is P5 now he's really on a rush and it's the fastest car on the truck at the moment absolutely major major move by Tony Salvice on uh, Roberto Valli there we see the uh, Finnish uh, driver with the uh, blue Matek Ford here Coelho now under pressure from Mike Volley we know how fast Coelho can be on the right day and I, I think he's, he's getting in the groove of the 4GT he is uh, catching uh, the top runners now so great to see him here with the uh, 
for GT. It's looking like Coelho and Bolly are closing their gaps between the six and fifth, uh, the, the six and fifth places. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, at that, look at that. Yeah, probably because Tony and Bali are uh, were fighting in the last few laps, and they need to uh, use these opportunities uh, for the most. Because we are now eight minutes uh, before the pit window opens, and uh, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we'll see some different strategy going on now. Uh, this is uh, Didier Coelho we're riding with in the uh, grey 4GT trying to catch Roberto Bali in front as we, uh, I think Roberto Bali is managing a lot because he's losing out uh, time-wise towards uh, Tony Taldice look at that, Tony is already hounding Johnny Gutierrez now yeah, well, Tony. as Barde oh and Kirill Kirillov unfortunately the second DNF of the race uh, sad to see him uh, retire this early uh, it's the Lamborghini Murcielago this time that takes the beating uh, we know Kirill was battling with uh, what I believe was Michael yeah, Lavelle P10. yeah P10 or P11 not sure what the issue was I'm pretty sure he collected damage from a spin yeah there, there we see him into Cop's corner uh, just goes wild loses it on the curb and hits the wall heavily that's gonna be he yeah, that's the end of it. Yeah, he probably had some problem before because he was fighting for P9 with Labelle and then suddenly now yeah. P17. Wow. Bad, sad, bad sad way. And what, a, what, a, what an accident, a bad accident into Cobb's corner. That's one of the highest speed points in the entire racetrack. So uh, the first Lamborghini to retire, uh, if you're joining now, unfortunately, Mark Pythry had an engine failure on his uh, Ford GT. As we now see Tony Talvice all over, Johnny Gutierrez into Magus Beckett's and Chapel. The Corvette is able to kind of stretch the gap into uh, Chapel, but we know the Ford is the quickest car right now. Um, and I also want to see that Johnny John B. De Guest uh, slightly falling back, so maybe uh, maybe he realized he was using too much fuel. I'm not sure uh, because we haven't really seen any strategy yet. Um, so we'll see. Now, Tony Talvice really putting the pressure on the on the previous champion, former champion in IMSA, with the BMW M4 GT3. Mike Bolli gross and spinning. He got on the throttle too early, trying to catch um, Ilir Coelho in the chicane. So he's now going to have to do it all over again. The Aston Martin driver. That's what we have been saying to you for this car. This car doesn't have traction control, so you, if you are oh. too aggressive on the throttle, this is how you're gonna be hand up at the... Actually, uh, actually he lost it under braking, so we, we also saw uh, the rear brakes glowing red, so maybe my Boyk is over, overeating the uh, brakes, as we now see uh, Johnny Gutierrez taking extreme defensive maneuvers against uh, Tony Salvicio, who is now trying everything to get past uh, Tony Talvici by far the fastest guy on the track right now. I mean, Tony Talvici has been putting great performance, but when you got a man like Johnny Gutierrez ahead of you, it is literally like trying to pass a, a, a wide, wide double car. You could call it a wall if you want. He won't let that position let go just easily, just like that. And so Tony Talvici, we know he's got a mission on, ahead of him to do. And uh, yeah, it's because you know Lorenzo, when the level is uh, quite equal, it gets pretty hard and uh, pretty... Ooh, and look at that. Saw that. Yeah, almost lost it right there. Yeah, they are, they're, they're both on the edge. As we saw, Johnny Gutierrez almost lose it. And then right afterwards, Tony Salvice sideways uh, into Beckett's. So great to see them battling their heart out. And Phil, that's Phil Brown on Rob Milliken. This is critical for the team championship as well. Because Rob Milliken, as we know, is the uh, teammate of uh, Johnny Gutierrez. So... Corvette versus Ford at its finest. Oh, an all-American battle, as uh, we've previously said, as uh, you know, Johnny Gutierrez and uh, Rob Milliken are from the USA. Now, Tony Salvice still behind Johnny Gutierrez, and what a what a performance from Johnny Gutierrez, I must say, because the Ford looks to be the strongest car um, 
but Johnny Gutierrez with the Corvetta doesn't seem to be working pretty well as Ooh, he understeered out of uh, the first the corner. And, what a beautiful yeah, oh, it's amazing. Very beautiful makes a stick on uh, Johnny Gutierrez. Johnny Gutierrez does not look like he's gonna settle for that. It looks like it was a grip like different because Tony had all the. Uh, he believed that he could make that corner. I mean, he had the absolute trust that his car was going to stick and went all the way from the outside and made it. But let's see if Johnny going to take it again. No, it looks like it's moved done by Tony. Yeah, although Tony is blocking out his front tires, as we see John B. Dickens make a mistake. Ooh, that is not good. That is uh, not people good. People are pitting. People are pitting. I saw Christian Dauer pit, and now Paul Upham uh, is in the pit lane. That's going to be against the rules. Yeah, the pit, the pit window is not open yet, so that's going to be a penalty for the next race for both of these drivers. Uh, now, Phil Brown going... Oh, and what happened there to Johnny Gutierrez? Ooh, losing, losing places already. I think he lost the place to, or, to uh, Johnny... To, to John Villiers, sorry. And is now being, uh, you know, harassed by uh, Roberto Valli. Incredible stuff. Tony Telvice, believe it or not, to P3. That is quite something, huh? Yeah, incredible stuff. Stars are starting to wearing out. Uh, maybe now you, we are going to see the difference now, it looks between like... the ones who care about the tires and the ones. Who Ooh, didn't. he spun. Ooh, he he, yeah, he went it. sideways there, Lorenzo and Ricardo. If you saw that. Yeah, and uh, what an amazing save by uh, Gutierrez. That was almost ended in tragedy as uh, the previous Lamborghini Murcielago retirement. So good on Johnny Gutierrez to save that car and. Uh, he now has to defend from Bali, though. Bali looks to be. Look, John is really struggling with the back of his of his car. It seems like he doesn't have grip at all. Yeah, but he also understeers in uh, fast corners, so probably a bad setup, uh, or a setup that d d doesn't pay off with tire wear. Uh, yeah, we'll see how you. Yeah, that very good pace. On yeah. The, on the first part of the spin, so probably he's going. He's finishing the tires. Uh, probably now, right now, your the drivers who are going to make the difference are the Ooh, ones who can what happened there? manage the better. Wow! I think somebody somebody went off because we got a yellow flag in sector three. Oh yeah, look at that! That's Steven Wenham. Uh, what happened there? He was trying to let Usain pass uh, for the lapping maneuver, Ooh, he and he spun on his own. Uh, Bad judgment, I mean, I mean, misunderstanding maybe between him and Usama. Uh, of course, that's a safe rejoin by Steven Wenham, so good driving. Um, yeah, th th he has to be careful though, because he, he will be, he will get a warning for that. He needs to get to uh, let the leader pass without uh, obstructing, so he will surely need to let Tony now pass on the uh, straight. Oh, and what happened? What happened? Usama! He pitted? Or he went... No! I don't think so. I don't think he pitted yet. He made a mistake. And Newcomb, the rookie... is. Oh, and he's getting into the pit lane before the 35 minutes mark. Look at that. He completely that. lost his front. I don't think he, he lost the front, is it? Did he? Yeah, he did. He absolutely no, he did. He oh, yeah, he did. And that's going to be that's going to be a penalty as well because he's seen before the 35 mark. I don't know, probably for No, the... I've seen people pit in Lorenzo before. I don't know, but I didn't really Yeah, know. That, he's he's the third guy. He's the third guy pitting. That was uh, the first one where uh, was Christian Dauger and Steven uh, Wenham, I think. So Maybe Sama is the third guy. The Maybe, I'm not sure. I I will have to double check that. Uh, what happened to Usama? We're trying to rewind the tape and see what happened. Uh, oh, he lost it out of chapel, and that's a big in Oh, what happened there? He completely lost. Looks the like he went the straight into the back of St. Maggots and then decided to join the track safely to not get a, uh, a truck cut, but somehow car snapped on him, causing him oh to lose the Oh my god, that's so barrier. weird. That's a weird type of incident, and of course, heavy damage uh, on the Lamborghini Murcielago. But that's a great shame. Usama was uh, showing uh, incredible pace uh, yeah. in the first uh, 25 minutes. He's still in the pit, by the way, Lorenzo and Ricardo. Yeah, that's gonna be a heavy, long oh, he pit stop out. for him. Out. There He's we see. Out. It took him about one minute of pit. That is not ideal, is it? 
Yeah, it's gonna be one minute and over thirty seconds. Yeah, one minute twenty five seconds uh, of total peak time. Uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be surely costly for him as he now has aerodynamic damage as well on the front. Yeah, I mean Usama can absolutely drive any car, and that includes the damaged one. But how fast can you be in order to make up all the places you lost? It's gonna be very hard. We're going to see people picking very shortly as Tony Salvici is now 1.7 seconds short uh, from Nick Newcomb. Nick Newcomb, the new leader of the race, of course. John, uh, John Bidiguest, John Bidiguest is pitting. One of uh, the first top runner to effectively went, go into the pit lane, uh, as we see Paul uh, Upham there in the pit lane as well. And there, there we see another four. That's Didier Coelho uh, pitting. So it's going to be chaos from now on. Of course, the pit window open. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Because his last lap is a 158. So he probably had made a mistake because Salvici was far way beyond. And Mike Bolik as well. Mike Bolik into the pit lane. We're going to see many, many cars pitting now uh, because the pit window opened two minutes ago. Yeah, everyone's desperate to get new tires at this point of the, of the race. Probably everyone is on their limit with the tires. I don't know, these cars are drifting very much into the corners, so maybe you are using your time. Tony Salvice, Tony Salvice, all over Nick Newcomb at the front. Oh, looks like the... Uh, uh, let me oh, and Tony Salvice goes slightly wide there into cops. Yeah, yeah I, I was, like was going to say Hamilton corner. Actually. So, thank you for that, Lorenzo, as we saw. Uh, Tony Talviti making the corpse corner. It looks like people get hesitant to take an overtake there. I think because there is a, it's so fast that you you start thinking that maybe it's not worth it. Yeah, and also these cars. Remember, guys, these cars do not have all the downforce that modern GT cars have. These are more raw and uh, mechanical in a way. So you need to understand the limit uh, in the, especially in the fast corners. We now see the Murcielago pitting. That's Nick Newcomb, the leader into the pit lane. Yes. Of course, Tony Talvice will now be elevated uh, to uh, P1. And good news for Gutierrez in the podium right now. I mean, provisionally, but... Yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna release Johnny Gutierrez and give, give, give him a bit of free air uh, in front as he needs that because Roberto Valli is right behind him. And, and we can also we will also be able to understand how much time Usama actually lost, as he was uh, under threat from uh, Nick Newcomb, and uh, Usama of course now in P12. But we know many many people are yet to pit. Uh, Nick Newcomb goes out now with a 34 seconds total pit lane time, uh, emerges in P4. So that tells you how much time Usama actually lost uh, with that mistake. I'm not sure. He was actually allowed to refuel the car, actually, uh, if you feel if you uh, fix damage. Yeah, uh, it, it was not. It was a bad mistake because he had a lot of gap and he didn't need to push that much on the on the back of the maggots. So probably he had to stay more calm because he had the pace, he had the gap. Uh, so probably he needed to be more calm. Yeah, under the uh, or maybe he saw Newcomb get him closer. And he got a little bit frustrated by that and tried to. I mean, but if you gap. look at this, Ricardo, I mean, when you have, when you're leading, relaxing sometimes, you're also not yeah. free from those small mistakes, that tiny bit mistakes that could happen without you noticing them because you're so relaxed, you're in, in the mood that yeah, yeah. you know oh, you yeah. got this for sure. But once you, it hits you with that mistake, sometimes you might get away with it. But as we can see in the case of Usama, the damage was inevitable. Yeah, and as we are speaking, it seems like Osama's damage is only visual, because it's only aesthetical, because he made a, an outstanding 151.8, which is the best lap of the race. As we see uh, Roberto Bali now in the pit He was P3 battling with uh, Johnny Gutierrez. So this is what Tony Salvice yet to pit. I'm pretty sure he modified his strategy uh, pretty radically when he had to uh, pit in the first lap, effectively uh, due to the uh, drive-through to the uh, stop-and-go penalty. Sorry, uh, at the beginning of the race. 
I mean, Usama has set up a new best lap. Can you believe that Lorenzo is he's putting Ooh, the pressure? Like that. I mean, that needs to be careful because Michael Labelle is for position. He doesn't need to leave Ooh. some of the space and he passes him. Look, let's look at uh, what happened there. Uh, oh, um, Michael Labelle was able to hold it. That yeah, was I think uh, pretty it was ambitious. A, uh, I think it was a uh, since the up from the onboard it, it looked a bit rough, but maybe it wasn't that rough as we expected, because both cars seems to be relatively okay. Because it, Michael Lavelle didn't lose that time, did he? And uh, oh, and Osama Osama again in the pit lane. Pits. Look at that. I wonder maybe why. to repair his car he didn't change his tires. I don't know. I mean, he was killing it. His lap time was amazing. They were no idea. Though. That's pretty weird. Rob Milliken and Bart Erickson, by the way. Rob Milliken just getting out. He needs to be careful because Usama is there. Yeah, well, this is a little bit weird. Oh, I'm oh that's a drive-through. A... Yeah, he got a penalty. I think because of uh, the S maybe corner. speeding into the pit Christian lane. as well got a penalty. Oh yeah. my God, that's gonna be a disaster for him. It looks like the uh, some corner, some weird places where drivers are not noticing, and it's. As we see, Ole Usama already trying to battle Rob Milliken, squeezes him through that turn three and takes all that slong straight to him, not choosing to defend, maybe because he trusts his braking, and yeah, for sure, he knows the pace is way better. So, yeah, this is going to be... Uh, oh, and uh, sorry to interrupt you, uh, Nas, but Tony Salvice, both him and Johnny Gutierrez in the pit lane, that's going to be critical for Nick Newcomb to get on with it. Uh, with uh, pretty much 27 minutes still left in the race. Because his car was put down by Newcomb get. I mean, Nick Combo, Nick Nuke, Newcomb. Man, that was so hard to get the name right. He's about to pass him right now as we oh, see Tony Oh, look Tal at that, though. Tony getting out of the pit lane. Ooh. It's going to be very close. Between him and Nick Newcomb. Nick Newcomb just able to hold it. It locks up his rear, his uh, front right tire, though. Tony Davice right behind him. And look at this for a fight. I mean, but let's... let's... and P2... Let's, stay, let's keep an eye on this, Lorenzo, because Tony Talviti still got cold tires, and you and Nick Newcomb already got the warm tires. So it's gonna be, it's gonna take a while for Tony Talviti to strike. But we know for sure that he's got the better tires. Ooh, Newcomb! Ooh, look at that! Yeah. Oh man! Oh saw, man! And we saw Nick Newcomb getting tested by the most experienced driver like Vidi Guest and Gutierrez, and now Talviti all the race. I, w I don't want to be in the, the place of Newcomb right now. Having these three catching onto you, uh, let's see if he can keep his pre keep the pressure up. And as a penalty is being served to Stefan right now, oh, Nuke, Nick made a mistake. And as I spoke, oh look at that! Too wide into the magazine. Magazine, what a pass from Tony Salvice into and the magazine. I think Nick Newcomb, 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 Newcomb went goes straight. wide. He went straight there. Yeah, he gets <laughs> away with it. Oh, definitely did, but he, this is a long straight, Lorenzo. What's going to happen right oh, here? And, oh, and look at that. Heartbreak for Sam Agnani. He DNFs oh. under the Silverstone Grand Prix. Oh, what? That's, what that's, very, that that's sad to hear. That's, uh, that's a bad news for him. And uh, such a shame for the pace he had shown earlier on. Um, of course, that's going to be one race left. The one race less for him. Uh, in terms of uh, points, I mean, uh, he still gets points. He still get points, but yeah, I don't know if it's an. I mean, yeah. No, I don't think he gets points because only the first, the top ten, get, is getting points. Yeah, only the top ten with the new point system, which is uh, Ooh, pretty similar to the Formula One. As well. Look at that. Nick Newcomb uh, needs to uh, relax a little bit because that's gonna be wow. seen by the stewards, and he looks yeah, to be absolutely. looks to have tire problems because he's locking up every every corner. So maybe, maybe. Salviche has it in the pack. Yeah, absolutely. Probably Newcomb has gone too far beyond the limit of his cars to try to stick with Salviche, but Salviche right now is doing something else. As Gutierrez is also catching up surely but Ooh, slowly. And, oh, and look at that! John Vidigas gets a penalty, not sure why. Wow. That's not sure why that is, but maybe a pit lane infringement or track limits looks uh, like, uh, exploiting. It looks like the stewards aren't too happy today. <laughs> no, absolutely not. We have seen many, many penalties. Um, of course. No prisoners yeah, absolutely not. And John Guillas is going to be pretty much out of it uh, as uh, he will emerge probably around P10. 
uh, with that with that uh, penalty. It needs to serve it in the next three laps, and I'm sure it will serve it now. But this is looking um, good for Quick uh, Didier and uh, Roberto, isn't it? Uh, Roberto will be elevated to P4, so still a podium up for grabs for him. And Didier Cueto is right behind him, so nothing is uh, nothing for know, certain for sure. Finished yet? Yeah. Ooh, but yeah, this is a very uh, I wouldn't call it a very desperate moment for John, but he really needs to pick up the pace as soon as he served that pit that penalty because uh, he will drop quite Ooh, look a lot. at that yeah Cueto sideways into stow that's not what you want to do to the tires as uh John Vitti gets get into the pit lane to serve his penalty which I suppose is a stop and go not sure though I will try to keep an eye on him for sure to see where that's gonna drop him right now as he oh it's uh, a drive through I think it is a drive through presumably uh, as he passes through yeah, I passed through a fallen, uh, <laughs> a fallen soldier Fighting right the there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so John VD Guest comes back, actually in P5. Sorry, P6. P6, yeah. P6 that is. So the gap were so uh, big that John VD Guest was able to keep his top six finish, and uh, that's going to be critical for him. He's now going to try and catch back towards these uh, two drivers, Didier Coelho and uh, Roberto Valli. So. Uh, maybe the drive-thru doesn't uh, destroy the race as much as we thought it would. Um, but you still lose uh, a bunch of seconds, so don't really guess we'll need to go on with it and try to catch back these two guys who are not fighting, by the way, so they will not be losing time anytime soon, pretty much. Um, now, if you're joining now, that's bad. We will be, uh, you know, friendly with you anyway, so you come with us next time. This is SteamRacingOnline.co.uk providing with the uh, uh, GT1, FIA GT1 2010 series, uh, series that sees these amazing vehicles uh, from the Lamborghini Murcella go to the uh, uh, for today's race, to the uh, Matic Engineering 4GT. Uh, a great, great series on our Factor 2 and we look forward uh, to the next rounds. Of course, if you want to be part of the spectacle, join simracingonline.co.uk. You can find every series they do here. And also join ATA Racing Team uh, for the broadcast here on Twitch. Wow, and Tavizia is flying. He made a 150.9. He's really on a flight. And yeah, Tony Salvici, really, him and Usama were the fastest guys uh, in the projection. And for sure, the, Tony is proving that is now seven seconds clear from uh, P2, so amazing. Yeah, but listen, uh, I mean, we saw what happened to Usama. He was all the way leading, but a small thing can happen and can switch the book, I would say, to a new chapter. But yeah, so absolutely. We should we, we should let, let's not sleep on this Lorenzo Ricardo. Let's let's keep it sharp. Absolutely not. Usama is surely was surely proving to be the guy to beat. So, uh, but still, I, I'm I'm looking forward to the next race. It's gonna be the first occasion to uh, redeem himself. For yeah, sure. I mean, I can already tell Lorenzo that you didn't get what you want today, which is the battle of Usama versus Tony. That was gonna yeah, be absolutely. interesting. If that if the race kept on going because these guys were very much matched in matched in terms of pace yeah absolutely absolutely it was a pity to get uh, to have Tal tony get this that drive through at the beginning and the mistake of osama uh probably that would have been the battle which uh which we we bring uh, on to all the race uh but you know it's racing it happens uh, there's not much you can do about it, uh, but Tony Salvici is really doing a great race because he had the drive-through at the beginning and now he's back on the on top. And not to underestimate the the race of Nick Newcomb, the the rookie one. Absolutely, a rookie, a rookie of the day in uh, oh, yeah, second been, place. He's been absolutely performing as we crossed the 20 minute mark. Now there's just a question where I'm gonna come to you, Lorenzo, because you're very nice. When I come to Ricardo as well. Do you think this livery is custom or it's already been there? Uh, Ed Jones? That is correct, yeah. The, no, this livery actually existed in uh, real life. Yeah. 
that's VDS Racing. It, it, it's a very famous livery because it got passed on on uh, quite a few cars, actually. And uh, the 4GT was, uh, I believe it was the last one to have it. Or maybe not. Maybe the uh, it had slight modifications, but I'm pretty sure I saw the same livery on uh, the McLaren MP4-12 uh, in its first uh, GT3 specification. Uh, so that would be... Yeah, maybe. 2012 or 2013, maybe? Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't remember well. But th this was the like the second team of the GT1s, the, the, the Matex 4GT. Because the first one was the Martex, and which was Emil Fry, I think? Yeah, uh, Emil Fry Racing. Yeah, that's yeah, correct. Absolutely. And that's the livery we are seeing on the on that 4GT on the back of this beautiful Aston, which is the for me the best looking car of the grid. Uh, absolutely. And it's a breathtaking machine and, for and sure. And the, oh no! It's now, now Michael Abel is a lap car uh, currently in P12. That's uh, the leader, Tony Salvici. Yeah. In the 4GT. Still dominant, and, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. And I was about to say this livery on the on Michael Abel's Aston Martin is as well a very much real livery, the uh, Hexis uh, sponsored uh, Aston, and fun fact, Hexis actually went on to sponsor the McLaren I was talking about uh, later on uh, in the first couple of GT3 championship uh, by FIA. Yeah. Well, looks like when you asked for an Aston, so here's your Aston. It's uh, looking absolutely majestic and it sounds beautiful as always, and uh, yeah. right behind him, Paul, Ape him and is in a GT1 giving us a skid. Hopefully, it doesn't touch the wall. I mean, that was cool, but yeah, ooh, that is not good, not good at all for Paul Appam. Appam, I don't know if that's correct. <laughs> we have to talk to the guy later, but yeah, what a what a skid right there. <laughs> Definitely breathtaking for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And talking about that liveries again, uh. We should say that it was a, a pity to see the GT1 of this era not having that that big sponsors on their liveries because the GT1 championship was not that followed at the time. So yeah, it's also were, was were not interested in looking for GT1 sponsorization or good liveries. So it was a pity because the car were very very good and very very beautiful. I think it has to do majorly to the, because of internet. Internet was played a major part in the GT racing, and it still is today. Most of the GT racing gets broadcasted on uh, YouTube, uh, as a fact. So, uh, you know, GT1 back then was the highest competition in uh, closed cockpit vehicles, probably. Um, I would say even more popular than um, the uh, WEC at the time, because we didn't have many LMP1s back then. And uh, so, yeah, it's a shame to, uh, that this specification of cars got pretty much changed uh, going into uh, 2012, as uh, this was pretty much the last season, the uh, 2010 uh, season, the last yeah. season that, uh, in which the real GT1 cars were uh, on the track. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a great category and it's great to see it here on Sim Racing Online. Yeah, absolutely. Reviving this championship is something, something really good and something beautiful. Uh, most, the biggest problem of this car was that these cars were very, very uh, high maintenance cost. Uh, they were very high, very uh, how can I say? Expensive. Yeah, uh, expensive. Perfect. And so because of that, the GT trees are start started to get uh, the most popular, popular yeah. yeah the most uh, the most following the most uh, viewers and sadly the GT1 died but at least we can revive these beautiful races with these beautiful mods and beautiful games and as we spoke Barrett Erickson and Robin Minikan are fighting for the ninth place Barrett Erickson which is we know the whitest <laughs> driver. Yeah, one of the let's say is not, never over the line with his maneuvers. Is very measured. 
uh, he is proving to be fast on many many cars. Uh, we of course he's the former champion in the uh, S three nine seven endurance series that we brought uh, here live on Twitch back in uh, back this uh, this uh, this uh, winter and. Yeah, and uh, Rob Millikan as well has been uh, pretty much a guarantee for his team. Uh, he's always in the top 10 and fighting for points, so good to see these two going at it. Uh, now into Cobb's corner, and uh, we see Bart Eriksson looks to be very, very menacing indeed. I mean, um, Bart Eriksson, uh, Lorenzo, I mean, I'm not going to say this, uh, but I will say it's my favorite drivers of all time when it comes to uh, strategy and all. I'll keep saying it and saying it. I know you might get tired of it, but I'll keep saying no, it and mention it because, uh, yeah, this this is uh, it's you gotta give credit where credit is due, and uh, yeah, Barry Erickson has been known for being so so good when it comes to strategy, so sweet and so on point. As he's now been chasing that P9 from Rob Milliken, looks like he didn't get the chance, or whenever he gets a chance, it always slips from his fingers and right as he gets into that uh, opportunity to get the pass. But yeah, as we see right there, we see Rob Milliken locking his front tires but it's not enough for Ryder Erickson to make a move as they're running on the same pace right now as they cross the start finish line. It's, pretty, it's been pretty intense right uh, so far I mean I've been keeping an eye on this uh, since uh, about the past 10 minutes right now and it's not over yet and uh, this is the only battle we got so far right now. It's looking pretty intense isn't it? Yeah absolutely and we know that Barry Erickson is a driver who doesn't go to attack the race. He's one of the well, he's a kind of driver who waits for the race to go to him and this is his best quality probably because he by the end of the race he usually is one of the fastest drivers and one who's one of the drivers who get more places uh, from where he started so let's see if he can do a well, big mistake by Paul Upman yeah a big mistake on the braking uh, these cars are very hard on the brake because no ABS so it's really really difficult to brake good and this is all uh, now we will keep an eye on that battle as we will see if bear Erickson will actually come up with something because this is the corner where most people lose the rear but so far it looks like it's oh look at that yeah he tries to have a peek up the inside but there's no way he's gonna do that yeah there. he's been doing that for a long time and it doesn't look like it's given him anything to get that p9 but uh the 4gt is able to follow us you know such a tight line compared to the Corvette, which looks to be uh, slightly loose. Uh, it's maybe a problem of uh, setup, as Rob Millikan is the teammate of John E. Gutierrez, so maybe they set up the, the car the same way as we saw Rob Millikan get slightly out of line in the uh, chapel there, uh, getting the chance to Barry Erickson, which is now playing his best. I mean, you can get, get greedy. Out of the Corvette. Can absolutely go a little bit greedy when it comes to downforce and maybe lower that uh, spoiler a little bit down, get that speed in the straight. But when it comes to the race and you start, when your tires start dying, and then you the the the, the reality hits you, and then uh, yeah, you start going sideways, and that's something we saw uh, Gutierrez has been doing, and it didn't work out pretty good for him, as uh, Tony Talviti agrees with. Oh, and yeah, Barry Erickson, Barry Erickson made the move stick. On uh, Milliken, I just saw yeah, the yeah, yeah. ending strange there. Barry Erickson gets his P9. Now, uh, Rob, at the expense of Rob Milliken. Now, since a lot of battles are not happening, why don't we see if we get this correct and go back right to the first places of the race where we happened? And this is how Gutierrez made up such a places. We're gonna go right ahead and we're gonna go on board of uh, every car we get as we see the start that Gutierrez yeah, Johnny gave Gutierrez him. made an incredible start. The Corvette being able to accelerate faster than yeah, John Yeah, and BDS. look at that in the back. I mean, take a look at that, Lorenzo. A Lamborghini right there slips and I believe that was... Uh, no, that's... that's uh, Yeah, that's two of the Ford Matex. Uh, that's... Uh, Barry Bar 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 Oh yeah. my god. I'm gonna look uh, on him for him right now. I mean, so Let's see if we can find the onboard uh, from Barrett Erickson so we can understand what happened. Yeah, there we see Barrett Erickson in the 4GT taking the inside line. Oh, and he looks got like, let me see who got he, He's been hit by Phil Brown. And yeah. 
Ooh, which caused them to, to, to turn and then being hit by the cars coming up, which I believe is Didier Coelho. Phil Brown goes on the outside. Bear Erickson. Ooh, a lot of pieces going up in the air. <laughs> what a start. I didn't uh, I didn't anticipate that to happen at the early... Yeah, but also something happened in turn three as well. I saw a Lamborghini go very, very wide indeed. Look in the background, you will see one of the Lamborghinis get way out of shape uh, into this corner. Yeah, there you see in the background. I think that's... Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, uh, so honest, many bro. things has been happening right here. Mike Volick, look, at, look, so many cars. Take a look at this. As the Lamborghini went on the outside and traffic is on the back. Two cars fighting on turn two. That was a... Uh, yeah, <laughs> we look see at a that. Car the going Lamborghini right there. goes on to the grass. Yeah, and Jowens, with, with passion, I would say, keeps his position. Hopefully, he didn't get a penalty on that when that happened. Yeah, that was a, that was one heck, heck of, a, of a start, wasn't it? Yeah. Absolutely chaotic start. And uh, rightfully so. I mean, these cars are unforgiving when it comes to uh, starting and uh, switching to a higher yeah. to a higher speed. So uh, it's uh, it's normal. It's expected. I would say we expected uh, a chaotic start of the race, and we got it. So nothing uh, nothing uh, out of the uh, out of this world. I would say. And uh, as a matter of fact, quietly and uh, but unrelentlessly, Johnny Gutierrez has been. Gaining time on Nick Newcomb right yeah, there, three been, seconds. Uh, he's been crawling on that P2, Lorenzo. He's been, he's, he's trying to snitch it from Nick. I mean, uh, he's got about seven minutes. It's not... Absolutely, he's had plenty of time to go. Johnny has a chance. Yeah, but we know from the scene before that the problem for Johnny is that at the end of the scene, this car is really difficult to drive, and it's a problem which Newcomb doesn't seem to have. So let's see if he can... Yeah, but I gotta add to that, uh, Ricardo, that uh, Gutierrez is not the type of driver that finds a mistake yeah, yeah, and absolutely. just, uh, like, let it go because he adapts for sure oh, yeah, and absolutely. knows that his absolutely. tires are now being, are gonna be slippy, so he probably took a different uh, aspect of driving, maybe tamed his tires for the for the, his stint, and maybe that gave him the the edge at the, the end, which I think I believe he was about 8 or not 10 seconds behind, and so far now he's climbing up in those seconds slowly. He's got about 7 minutes. It's going to be pretty intense. Yeah, Absolutely, and he's been gaining, he's been gaining steadily on uh, Nick Newcomb the last couple laps. Um, I'm not sure why. Maybe maybe they, have, they are on a different fuel strategy, and they are trying to uh, study each other a as we see a for penalty Mike. for Mike Volick, that's gonna be, oh, that's uh -oh. heartbreak, that's gonna, that's probably gonna get him out of the points. Mike Volick, of course, running in P7 at the moment, and he was fighting with Phil Brown, so Phil Brown will say thank you very much indeed for that, Yeah, he will and he will get it. one position further into the field. I really want to hear from the drivers where did they get the penalty. Uh, it's really like I couldn't tell exactly where are they getting it. Maybe the I, I believe I think it's the off escort. track and track limit in general are an issue here. And uh, Mike Bolik uh, smartly, I would say, steering. Oh, and he was struggled. Yeah, hopefully he didn't get a penalty from that. Yeah, as well. hopefully he didn't get a penalty for speeding. Because he will serve another drive through, and that is pretty much race done. Because it's uh, now let's see. five minutes to go. Barrett. Barrett Harrison maybe is too far away to get the position from Mike Volick. Even he will absolutely not get it. I will tell you that. I yeah. mean, the the pit taking the penalties from what we saw earlier isn't too bad as you might think. You might lose a place or position if you're that close. Yeah. But about 20 seconds, it doesn't look that my bad accent is gonna make anything up from that because if we look, we will see Mike Volick no, already no, at turn three. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this is maybe because the pit lane of that part of Silverstone is really, really short. Is not that long, uh, so probably the pit, uh, the, uh, the drive-through is not that bad as a, let me pass the term, is not that bad as a penalty as a stop and go can be. Uh, but let's see if now probably my volley race is going to end on its position if Tim Brown doesn't make any mistakes. So yeah, well, pretty uh, pleased, uh, the position pretty pleased. I'm going to throw something right here. Uh, we have three 
after uh, manufacturers, I was gonna say aftermarks, I don't know why. We have three manufacturers at the top, and that is the Ford leading right now, followed by Nick in the Lamborghini, followed by John Gutierrez in the Corvette. Three different manufacturers at the podium. That is quite beautiful. And that, that tells you that tells you how unforgiving and uh, unpredictable these cars can be. Uh, because we saw a total, uh, I would say, supremacy by the Fords in uh, general pace. Uh, but from the beginning of the race, it looked pretty clear that the faster car on the straight line was the uh, Lamborghini Murcielago. So um, I would say it's very very balanced. I, I'm, I will surely be looking forward uh, to the next couple of races uh, to see how the cars behave on a different track. Um, now, Tony Salvice here in the fast corners in Sector 2 approaching sector three is being the fastest car for the last couple laps uh tony what a what a great drive for him i mean the drive through penalty at the beginning and then another you know entrance into the pits for tires and fuel and look at how he was able to rebound uh from that all the way to p1 well, that's absolutely good for Tony Talviti, but something that might upset you, Lorenzo, is that no Aston Martin is in the top five, but we have only one, it is P8 right now, that is Mike Volick, but no Aston Martin, it is Ford, followed by a Ford, followed by a Ford, it is an American domination today, and with only one Lamborghini, so yeah, I mean, uh, you can say you're not biased, Lorenzo, but as an Italian, how do you feel about this? I want to put you in the, in the, I mean, in the spot. <laughs> I am, I am, I, I expected the Aston Martin to be the strongest uh, car here, uh, because it looked to, be, to have the right balance uh, in uh, braking, which is important here in Silverstone if you're trying to overtake someone, but also it had a decent top speed and uh, pretty uh, stable driving style, I would say, for the uh, technical parts. So I would say I'm more surprised the Aston Martin were not that fast uh, compared to the Lamborghinis, which I would say they were, you know, en route to a P1 with Osama and a possible potential podium with Nick Newcomb, which is now getting under pressure from Johnny Gutierrez. And Johnny Gutierrez... Uh, he gained a lot in the last lap, but he needs to get on with it if he wants to yeah, uh, he gotta try pick up something on Nick because it's two minutes into the into the race now. That's so. about three laps yeah, or, or less, maybe. The next one will be the last one. Probably the next lap will be the last one. And uh, not probably, surely. Depends on uh, Tony. Depends on the track position of uh, Tony Salvisha, actually. I mean, uh, let's be honest, Lorenzo. We always like the underdog. We always like to see something prevail. So. I'm gonna say that I'm right now rooting for Gutierrez, not that I'm a guest on Nick, but we always love to see what the underdog can do, and I believe Johnny Gutierrez, oh, as we see Ooh, Nick locks up right Nick there. Nick Newcomb making a mistake, and that's gonna Ooh, open the uh, place for Johnny Gutierrez to go through. Look at that, he's got the speed in the uh, uh, braid line. Now, let's yeah. see Nick uh, Newcomb uh, making yeah. himself in the right place. Johnny is gonna have to force the move up. Out the oh, absolutely. I mean, he's got the speed, but does he got the, the violence and the momentum? I'm not sure about that. Oh, that's decides to lunge. up the inside. Oh. Backs out of it. What a Nick ball Newcomb ball. not having any of it. Breaking by New Newcomb. Great breaking right there. I don't know about you, Lorenzo. I'm One getting the chills left, watching this guys. right now. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing with it is. 60 seconds left into the race. Uh, Nick Newcomb really making a shot for it against the champion now we'll see what happens Johnny Gutierrez well look at the Corvette under braking that car is hella fast under braking yeah I mean Gutierrez right now this is the part where where drivers start actually oh, thinking one. about everything he, he does Nick got loose out of turn three Johnny Gutierrez will have a great chance now look uh, at the speed of the Lamborghini though I'm waiting for, for, for a legendary lunch right here, Lorenzo Ricardo. I am looking yeah, forward I mean, for that. Johnny will have to try something if he wants that. Picture. He absolutely does. I mean, this is the last stages. A couple corners is away from that P2 for Johnny Gutierrez. Nick, Nick yeah. Newcomb know this. Know that Gutierrez will throw everything at him. So he's now in a very dangerous position. Look at that! Johnny Gutierrez up the inside, but the Lamborghini is too fast on the straight line. Let's go quickly and check. Tony Dalviti haven't crossed the line, so this is the last lap for Gutierrez yeah. and uh, Nick Newcomb. 
Oh, uh, he's a bit too far right here. Okay, Not sure if, if that's good. Income, right now, I'll be tanking the top speed of the Lamborghini. Lamborghini proving to be one hell of a car on the straight line, but the Corvette, driven by the champion. Ah, he slid right there. Did you see that, Lorenzo? And Gutierrez is now. I think he flashed his lights. I think that's a. Uh, that's the white flag for him as a sign of you did it. Yeah. I give up. Because there's not, I mean, if he if he has to throw it right from now. here, it'll oh. be a penalty for sure. So I don't think he's gonna do anything. I think Ooh, he sideways as Tony Talvice crosses the line in P1, and what a win! What a win from Tony! What a what a great race for him! Yes, so yeah. and then he was able to get back to P1, and what a race! Nick by Newcomb, Newcomb P2 of the day. right there, followed the by second place. What a race! What an absolute Johnny race! Jarrett. Great race by him as well. Roberto Valli with a quite, absolutely quite race. This yeah, is his first race, isn't race it, Lorenzo? Roberto Valli. Yeah, absolutely. And also, he, he didn't make any mistakes. So good on Roberto Valli now with a P4. Very good. And uh, Didier Coelho, what a race from Didier. I'm very happy to see him in the top five, finally. Yeah, Vidi Guest really slips in that P6. Probably, <laughs> yeah, other than Usama, I would say John Vidi Guest is the... Uh, I would say the, the the guy who lost out Adley because he was uh, fighting for P3 at one stage. He's now P6. Uh, Phil Brown, the rookie, P7 for him. Mike Volick with a difficult uh, last few laps is able to savage uh, P8. So great job, Art Erickson, uh, slightly uh, slightly under. Yeah, slightly underperforming uh, Barrett Erickson, but uh, top not top nine, so still in the points. And yeah. uh, oh, look at that! Nothing that's is not over yet here. It is a battle, actually. Hold on a minute. It is no, a battle. Oh no, sorry, that's Tony Talvice. That's Tony from uh, the, uh, come lab, on, the final Lorenzo. lap. Uh, I wanted to get a little bit of excitement before the second race. Come on. Yeah, Tony That's Davis, uh, yeah. Rob Milliken uh, yeah, he didn't finish bracing yet. up for P10. Uh, so good good stuff from Roberts. I mean, uh, finishing the points in that Corvette is not yeah, easy. Ooh, I would want to see that Corvette every day of the week, man. That's beautiful. And what a beautiful race as well by uh, Rob Milliken, P10. Yeah, uh, this is out of the points, finishers are Ed Jones, Michael Abel, Paul Dupin with many, many pit stops and probably a couple penalties as well. Uh, Alongside Christian Dauer and Steven Wenham uh, in P15. Of course, heartbreak for uh, three people today. Usam Magnani, the leader, uh, DNF uh, with a crash on the Lamborghini. Kirill Krilov, but now I'm not sure what happened to him, but he lost the Lamborghini in the uh, cop's corner, impacted the wall heavily, and uh, had to retire as a consequence. And uh, Mark, yeah, Mark had a. Uh, uh, engine failure at the beginning of the race. So many, many things happened today. What a great way to start off the GT1 series with Tony Salvice leading uh, Nick Newcomb in P2. Um, great, great, uh, great race. Johnny Gutierrez in P3. Roberto Valli, P4. Didier Coelho, P5. Uh, John Guest in P6. Uh, we were having uh, some issues with the uh, standings. Uh, not sure why. Uh, but yeah, top six, you heard it. And uh, of course, the points finishers are all the way to P10. Um, a great, great race, I would say. What was your impression, uh, Nas? I loved every part of it, Lorenzo. This looked beautiful. I, I mean, absolutely very um, unfortunate news for the leader, who was Usama. He could have he snatched the win today, but it looks like that mistake took that or took it like right from his fingers right there right at the tip of the finger he was about to get it so that got me a bit of a, a little bit upset but then Tony who got the win today Tony Talviti yes Tony Talviti made up an absolutely heroic move getting that penalty early in the race making his way all the way up not downtown but down the traffic of the cars all the way down to take to snatch that win Nick Newcomb was actually leading at certain stages of the race but yeah I think P2 is also solid for him yeah, it was pretty intense, Lorenzo. I mean, uh, Ricardo joined us today. I'm sure he got the chills. He's been, uh, <laughs> he's been loving. Uh, did you Absolutely. like this today, Ricardo? Yeah, yeah, pretty good race. Pretty good race. Uh, these cars are amazing, and I think they bring out the really ability of the drivers because these cars are very oversteery, are very difficult to control, very difficult to manage the tires. So you have to be uh, a really 
talented driver to get those lap times, those lines good, and everything else, which is a good setup, and you know everything. So I think that everyone who got the everyone on the podium deserves deserved their position. I'm sad for Osama because he was clearly the fastest car on the on the on the track. Uh, he paid too much for a bit a little mistake. Um, what can I say? Beautiful race by everyone. Uh, very clean. Uh, I think this is all I can say. And as we speak, we have one of the drivers, in fact, a racing team driver on the Lamborghini Urshelago getting a P2 with an amazing race today, Nick Newcomb. What was your impression on the track, Nick? Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was, uh, it was fun, for sure. Um, a few mistakes, sadly, but um, uh, I think the pit stops was good because um, I, I did... What you should always do, I try to do a, a good in lap and a, and a good out lap. In um, I managed to jump back into the lead just on um, by I think by about two car lengths because I, I put in my yes. fastest time on that uh, out the second out. Yeah, lap. he was uh, three tenths behind you. Yeah, so that was pretty good. But then uh, I lost the cups. I think um, good stuff. Went in too hard, um, but I, I didn't have the pace anyway for to hold off Tony, um, that's for sure. Um, so I just concentrated on trying to hold on P2 and uh, look after the tyres. I didn't want to put in too many quick laps because uh, the tyres dis- disintegrated a little bit. Um, but the car was good, but I think uh, the Ford was the car. Um, it was pure power and grunt. Uh, the Chevrolet as well, uh, when I was getting caught uh, near the end, the, the power of the Chevy was certainly there. Um, whereas my car uh, with heavy fuel was pretty difficult. Uh, on lighter fuel, it was okay, but by then the tyres had uh, are well past their best. But overall, first race, I'm uh, pretty happy with the P2. Started P3, so again, of one spot, which is uh, what you always want, isn't it? Absolutely magnificent race from you, man, and I enjoyed watching you. I remember you were keeping it up with the the, ser- the previous series champion that was Johnny Gutierrez. So great, uh, great race, and uh, looking forward to the next one for you, man. Yeah, yeah, it was good. There was that little mistake I made, and he and he, and he kept up, crept up on uh, Maria Bumpers, but uh, I just placed the car where it needed to be. Uh, nothing. Um, bad about the move that were that were made and and then sadly he he um he tried to make a move into cops with, like trying to distract us on like pulling on the inside but then he lost his line and you know, that would have been a really good finish towards the end but uh, I think we both did uh, a pretty good race um and it was it's pretty scary really when you're sitting and the great sound from the Lamborghini but when you've got the the grunt of the Chevy coming up behind you—it it wakes you up. Like it's—it's a, it's a great sound when you, when it comes over the top of the Lamborghini. I mean, it looks like Gutierrez when he was behind you, Nick. It looks like at the end when he knew the inevitable was inevitable. It looks like he flashed his lights to you as a friendly reminder of, uh, "We'll see each other again, maybe." So- oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, we, we're both race good. It was a good, clean race, I'm sure. Um, there's absolutely no way I would. Um, put him in danger or myself in danger um if the move's there i would i'd rather uh, let the move be completed than try and uh, shoulder get the sh- get the old elbows out and try and, and shoulder him off uh, the track that's for sure so he, he's safe with me now if i were gutierrez and i heard that i would be super happy for the next race because i know i'll throw everything on nick <laughs> but, yeah but it, yeah but i know how i know how to defend uh, i've got too many years behind me on this uh like all the way back to gtr2 so i know how to defend and i know how that's, to... that's a great game and speaking yeah. about gt1s gtr2 was the game uh yeah great stuff. Uh, yeah brilliant enjoyed it thanks guys and uh thanks for the old spot <laughs> helping me, me? In the, in the race. <laughs> i was there 
Yeah, yeah you, Nick, you killed it today. Absolute performance. We can't wait to see you again. Uh, we'll say our goodbye to you, but we will move on to a driver. Not sure if he's with us right now. John VD Guest, the man who uh, got robbed from possible top five today and got a P6. Johnny Gutierrez, how do you feel about that? Oh, sorry. Sorry I called you Gutierrez. Did I just do that? <laughs> I actually just did that. I'm, my apologies. John VD Guest, sorry. How do you feel about that? <laughs> That was a nice intro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, uh, yeah, hey, Nick, I blew it right Nick, there. I've got, I've got news for you, Nick. <laughs> yeah. Johnny knows how to. You know how to defend. Johnny knows how to attack. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got, I got carried out. Definitely. Yeah, but talk us through, yeah. uh, John. I mean, uh, that was quite a race from the start till the end. Man, did you see how I let Tony Telfici uh, by without uh, obstructing him? Did uh, you catch that in the book? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think we did. Yeah, you, yes, you seemed like you seemed like you had lost it kind of uh, on the 4GT. Well, uh, he was uh, in front of me in qualifying in second place, and I didn't know what happened on the first lap. I thought I saw him go in to do a drive through because yeah, I didn't he know did what a happened. stop and go at the beginning of the race. Okay, I thought so because he all of a sudden he was behind me, so he was. He was uh, coming up the ranks, and I saw him coming up, and when he was behind me, I pulled over and let him through, because I knew he was gunning for the win. <laughs> and he didn't disappoint me, because he's my teammate, you know, he's also in gear. I've got a team uh, called Gear, and he's my teammate in gear, so I let him through, he's faster than me. And uh, he didn't disappoint, did he? He won the race. Oh, he did. Yeah, what a great race for him, I mean... Uh... Judging from what happened at the beginning, which I'm not sure of, I think he jumped the star, maybe. Yeah, he got a penalty, but he was able exactly. to uh, rebound. Well, on a great, great, great race by Tony. You know what happens when you're on the starting grid and you uh, you put the clutch in? Uh, the car start, starts to roll back a little bit. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's a, the starting grid is oh, it's sort of a slope, and. I, Maybe he didn't catch it in time, and when you roll back too much, you get a false start. Penalty. No, he went. Oh. Uh, no, he engaged the first gear just to get back to the position, oh, and he went okay. uh, a bit ahead. Osama did the same thing, but he didn't get the penalty. Ah, okay. Well, I had basically three moments in the race. The first moment was when I uh, started uh, the race on the first lap. I completed the first lap and then I saw on the fuel consumption uh, display that the fuel was 3.7 and I calculated the whole fuel for the race for 2.7. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I was one liter per lap short, so I was in my mind, oh my god, what a senior moment, how can you be so stupid? And I was in position two or three already, so that was going through my mind, and I was so distracted with, will I make it uh, to the 35 minute mark, so I don't have to stop an extra time to get fuel, you know, because I would run out. So I barely made it to 35 minutes, so I could... Uh, I could uh, do my pit stop and then coming out of the pits uh, Jody hadn't stopped so uh, he, had, he still had to stop but I thought well this might be a good thing because if I stop early I have fresh tires and I can put in some good laps and come out in front of, uh, come out uh, uh, in front of him so but then I was uh, starting to push the first lap after the pit stop and there was an Aston Martin in front of me, which I was uh, going to going to lap or overtake, I don't know. But he was trying to get out of my way and going to, through turn two. He suddenly uh, stayed on the outside, exactly on the same line as where I was going to overtake him. And he, he pulled on the brakes and I was so close behind him. I had to jump on the brakes and brake so incredibly hard that I destroyed all my front tires i had a major major flat spot on the front tires after that so i couldn't push at all anymore the car was shaking and rattling it was like a rock and roll song you know and then i also because i was uh, ticked off because of that uh, well it was just a misunderstanding but I, I was ticked off because i didn't have the tires anymore to push and then uh, i made a few I went, I went wide a few times outside the track uh, uh, 
uh, the, the, the track zone and I got a stop and go penalty or a drive through penalty so that's why I had to come in an extra time so that's why I got si sixth place uh, well it, it was a fun race sixth place is, is not bad I had, uh, I had fun battling some guys so it's all good so that, that was my race well that was a uh... I think I think you answered all the questions yeah, I could have asked. Uh, John, John, that was the, pretty intense. Um, the Ford you've been using seemed like the fastest car on the grid. Uh, did you feel like that while driving behind Nick and Johnny, or you think that maybe they are faster and or maybe the cars are all the same? Well, the general uh, feeling is that the Lamborghini is the fastest car of the six. And uh, the Ford might be the second quickest car, but I'll tell you why uh, Tony and I had such a fast car. Tony is really good in the, in setups. Tony Tolvici. Oh so yeah, he's really good at, in setups. So he uses Mo. I don't use MoTeC at all because I'm so lazy. But he uses <laughs> Mo. He uses MoTeC. Yeah, yeah, I just set up the car by feeling. So when I see I, I'm doing a fast lap time, I say, okay, this is a good setup. But he he uses a more uh, scientific approach. So he, he goes to MoTeC and uh, he, he, he checks out what the right height should be. And so, so he made a really good setup. And uh, we were driving on wing one front and eight at the back. So that's a really low uh, downforce uh, package for the Ford. Because the maximum you can go is uh, 30 on the rear wing and 20, I believe, or also 30 on the front wing. Anyway, we had one eight <laughs> and a really yeah. good uh, suspension setup and uh, a spring setup, so we could do the we could do the the turnings without drifting too wide. So the car was uh, the car was pretty fast on its own without being a Ford. Yeah, definitely, definitely. It seemed the most stable car of the pack. Yeah. Great job, great job. Oh, it was such a shame that I destroyed my front tires in the second <laughs> stint. <laughs> Otherwise, I could be battling with Johnny, you know, because I was in front of him before the pit stop. And the because I had to slam on the brakes and avoid that Aston Martin, I lost four to five seconds. And that was just the gap that he needed to after the pit stop to get out in front of me. If, if I hadn't had that moment, I would have stayed in front and my tires would be good and it was going to be on. <laughs> nice. Yeah. How did you experience the race as a broadcaster? Did you have fun watching it? It was yeah, quite yeah. amazing for me. Well, Ricardo joined us today. I'll let him have the word because he's the one who should be answering that because this is quite a new experience for him. <laughs> did you enjoy that, Ricardo? Yeah, it's it's a little bit different to looking people which I was racing with uh, from the other side, you know uh try to get a commentary on them try to understand what they are doing without being on the on the truck physically uh this was pretty good uh really fun i hope that uh, most of the people stick with this championship because we saw uh, a very a very close pack uh except for the top five probably but it's something that happens all the time uh, and maybe if there wasn't that big accident at the beginning, uh, the race could have been even different. Uh, clearly, I had a lot of fun to to add the, this broadcast, uh, but I still have to get used uh, how to talk, how to speak, when to speak. Uh, but I mean, from now on, it's only going to improve, I hope. So I hope that I can be a, a good add-on for the, the broadcast and the, the series, not as a driver, but as a, as a commentator. Um, oh, you were commentating. You were you weren't driving. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was on the I was uh, on the broadcast. Um, I was a little bit disappointed because we had twenty five signups and only eighteen appeared. So that yeah, was yeah, nineteen team. nineteen cars out 19. of the twenty nine that. Uh, signed up and yeah. it's, uh, I mean it's a pretty good ratio I have seen many many r 2 leagues we get doesn't they don't even get a half of the attendance that we saw today so uh, uh, should we continue on these numbers this is going to be a great series 
Well, I have an announcement to make. Uh, I spoke to Tony Tolvici, and he's a really nice guy, and we decided to share our setup. And the setup oh. is uh, has <laughs> a basic values, so it's not only good for the Ford. That setup that we make would work on all six cars, all six makes. So it would work on the Aston Martin, it would work on the Lamborghini and all the other cars. So I'm going to upload that setup and you don't have to drive especially the Ford with that setup. You can apply it to the other cars and you also have a fast and stable setup. So that maybe that will entice people to, uh, to stay in the series and maybe we'll get a few more signups. I mean, uh, absolutely. That that's uh, that's good on you, man. That's uh, you don't see that every day. So yeah, yeah absolutely. We're going to share. I appreciate by you know I speak for all the drivers. I appreciate it because that's that's uh, that shows how much you guys take care of this uh, championships and simulating online. And uh, kudos to you because that's uh, that's very very kind. I mean, uh, you don't see that type of. Uh, every day so well, good on you John. you know it's not about winning it's about having fun together and you need the other guys Absolutely. to, be there to yeah. have fun you know yeah we but, need them but john john i'm gonna ask you one thing would, would, would you have done the same if there was a money jar involved <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't care about money i'm rich <laughs> okay that's uh that's one way to answer that I, question i've i've got enough money <laughs> Well, what can I say, I would, John? I would have also yeah, shared it. <laughs> You've passed the test. It's 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 been uh, it's been know, said. Did, did you see that I was driving alone most of the time in the second stint? Yeah, it it got, it got spread. It, it got spread uh, at the end, but we got some like we. Got, yeah. I think we had a, one battle between Bear Erickson and uh, probably Didier Coelho in the okay, middle of the so race. I want people to be fast. I want people to be close to me. I want people to fight with me because driving alone is boring. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. if they get a good setup, maybe they'll be a little bit quicker. The guys running uh, more uh, uh, at the back behind me, the cars in front of me don't need any help, but people who need a little help in the setup can uh, look at the setup and apply it. And maybe look, they'll get a little bit fast because it's it's a fast... Before, okay, we're going to Bruno the next round, and maybe wing one and eight is a little bit too low, so you could run maybe wing uh, two and uh, 16 at the back. But you can still apply the same spring and damper settings. Uh, that would also work there. One last question to you, uh, John, and this is not about the race. This is about the uh, points, because... Uh, I, I want to know, because I've already said about the points that they were, because I heard this from Renzo, I want to check, are the points given to only the top 10? The points, I wanted to duplicate the real series as much as possible. So the pit window is, is exactly as it was in 2010 in the, real, in the real series, and the points are the same point scoring system is the same point scoring system as the real series in 2010 so that's why i applied it now i'm gonna go ahead and i'll say john that i'm the biggest fan of that idea because now to me it seems like getting in the top 10 actually makes it more valuable because back then i'm not going to say the system was was uh, bad or not or not below average or anything but the points of giving everyone like all the way to the end seems Mm. too nice for when there's competition especially <laughs> when there's yeah. a lot of people a lot of people are fighting for their points and now getting just into the top 10 seems to be more valuable than just finishing the race and you know you got the points in the back so i want to say you guys did an absolutely fantastic job on uh, making those uh, slight changes i know you guys were trying to make it as realistic to the real event but it actually turned out for the good for the series and to be as realistic as well so kudos to that actually good job because i mentioned that on other streams and i thought you guys picked it up for that but it seems like you also guys were going for the realism uh, and it's good to see that as well i ex i absolutely agree with you so uh if you if you now get a point you've accomplished something and before you you got points for free you, you got points just for finishing <laughs> but now when you get a point you 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 have made an achievement Yes, so, there's that sort of appreciation yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's a reward. I, I prefer this system because you reward people who actually put in some of the work, at least in the race. Um, and that, 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 I think that high ends 
the level of competition as well. Uh, and, you know, twice the competition, twice the fun. So I think that's the right move. And, uh, yeah. of course, this was an amazing race. I mean, I, of course, I'm not new to this kind of uh, races here, but uh, as much as maybe Ricardo is. But I must say, I rarely remember an, a 60-minute race with this much action. I mean, this was an amazing, amazing event. And uh, Yeah? Okay. Uh, I was driving was alone, a so I race, see man. it. Yeah. A great, great race, intense action. all the way to the end. I mean, battles going on at every position, and uh, yeah. not only at the front. Um, so, yeah, cool. great, uh, great way of starting out the championship. And I have to say also uh, a mega, mega support from everybody else uh, in, the, in the chat, of course. Uh, all the subscribers and uh, followers they have been you know like sold in a in a you know a fancy plate it's uh, it, the support we are getting for these races are is amazing so thank you all for following us in this great race at silverstone and uh, out, next up in um, the gt1 2010 series is uh, nonetheless one of the best tracks in europe uh, which is the Brno Masaryk track, and that's a track we, we have never seen here. Um, it used to be featured in the GT1 series back then uh, as one of the highest and uh, most demanding tracks of them all, because it's very, very technical. Yeah. Um, so you need to nail the setup on the cars. And we have seen the Corvette today being slightly loose in some of the corners, so I want to I wanna check those in Brno and see how the drivers are gonna cope with the conditions. Mm. Um, but also, of course, the Lamborghinis, we have tremendous top speed. Uh, I wanna see how the setup will, uh, you know, modify the cars yeah. as well. So great, great, uh, great job, guys, everyone. John, Nick, Sam, Rick, uh, Nas, everybody. Um, this was a great race and I'm looking forward to the next one. We're going to stream Brno round two of the uh, GT1 2010 series on the 10th of July. That's July 10th. Um, yeah, see you there, man. And uh, thanks for everything. This was a great race, great event, and uh, great racing overall. If you want to be part of the spectacle, guys, go check simracingonline.co.uk. Uh, where many many uh, races and uh, series are going on not only on our factor 2 but also automobilista 2 project cars assetto corsa assetto corsa comp many many things going on support the boys they have the best sim racing uh, categories you can wish for and uh, of course follow us here on ether racing for more of this so thank you everyone and uh, we will see you in the next one cool goodbye you take care, everyone and we'll see you very soon Cheers, man. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Bye everyone.